we have been in this place and coming to you live from gospel embers chapel in kisi and from wherever you're watching us from whichever corner of the universe we want you to understand that god loves you and we want you to understand that today god had a message for you and that's why he purposed to have this service come to you so as you keep tuning in we know that the almighty god will speak to you in a unique way to lift you beyond expectation today i want to speak about the power of the gospel the real sense I'm not speaking about the power of the gospel but how the gospel is power in my study at the university I came to learn that the process of writing the bible was completed about the 50th century it's about 200 a.d which most theologians call the process of biblical canonization this was a process of compiling the bible to make it acceptable to all people But it was completed when none of the disciples of Jesus was alive. None of them was alive. That's when the process was completed. The question that I'm trying to respond to today if the process of writing the bible was completed when no disciple was alive the question you need to answer then did the disciples then preach the gospel if they preached the gospel then the gospel was not waiting for the bible to be completed so that to be preached that can tell you therefore that the gospel could be something different from the bible that we have Jesus told his disciples to go everywhere and preach the gospel. And during that time, the Bible had not yet been completed. And the disciples decided to preach the gospel, yet the Bible was not there. Praise be to God. There is a big difference between the word of God and the word from God and the gospel. And I want to make a pre-divination. This is not from a theological seminary, but it's by revelation. The Bible is the word of God. You can write that. Wherever you are at home, the Bible is the Word of God. Actually, we call it the infallible Word of God. That's what the Bible is. While the Bible is the Word of God, prophecy is the Word from God. The Bible is the Word of God. It is God who owns the Bible. It belongs to him. It is the word of God. When you want to find more about God, you refer to the Bible. And when God is speaking to your life currently, that we call it a word from God. It is called prophecy. 
That is to say every prophet he spoke from God. The Bible says every prophecy came from God. And there is no prophet that he spoke according to his own capability. It is God who gave them utterances. So prophecy is a word from God. Differentiate the two wherever you are. The Bible is the word of God. Prophecy is the word from God. And the gospel is the power of God. The gospel is not a word from God. It's not a word of God. It's the power of God. When you refer to your Bible, which is a great book that defines God to us, that tells us who God is. The Bible in Romans chapter 1 and verse 16 the Bible says, I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is God's power unto salvation. It is not God's word. It is not a word from God. It is God's power. Praise be to God. So there is need for people to understand. You should never treat any prophecy with contempt, for it is a word from God. You should never despise the Bible, for it is the word of God. And you should never close your ear to the gospel, for it is God's power unto salvation. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 20, the Bible says that we should never treat any prophecy with contempt. And the prophetic word is everywhere. That's why the gospel are to create the office of the prophet. So that you can have the prophetic word for the direction of your life. Every time you receive a word of prophecy, don't treat it with contempt. Take it seriously. It is meant to guide your direction and to give you a future. Because prophecy opens the future to you. Praise be to God. Prophecy opens a future for you. Every prophetic word, every prophetic decree is from God for the sake of your life. If you treat it with contempt, you are unlikely to realize your future. But if you want your future to come to where you are, embrace the word of prophecy. Praise be to God. In Matthew 22, the verse 29, Matthew 22 and verse 29, Jesus said something. He said, You are in error because you don't know the scripture nor the power of God. Let me tell you, child of God, there are so many people who have concentrated their time to understand the scripture, to claim the scripture, to know the scripture. Yet they have they are still in problems because they don't know the power. You may know the scripture, but if you don't know the power, you are in error. You may know the power, but if you don't know the scripture, you are still in error. Jesus said you are in error because you don't know the scripture nor the power. The scripture is the written word of God. But the power of God, you can understand that it is. It is also enshrined in the Bible, but it is demonstrated. It is exercised. Praise be to God. And today, I may not have adequate time to explain the scripture. For I have done that for the last seven years. Explain the scripture. You know one time, Jesus said that you search in the scripture because you think in them you have eternal life. You have no idea that the scripture testify of me. The scriptures testify of the Lord. The scriptures are talking about Jesus. They are talking about the Holy Spirit. But today, I want to speak about power. Because so many people know how to speak and to preach the scripture. Many people have been to theological seminary. They know how to get the context right. They know how to make an excuse. They have done biblical 
hermeneutics. They have done homiletics. But they do not know how the power of God works. Yet Jesus said, if you don't want to be in error, you must understand the scripture and understand the power. Do not limit yourself to the scripture alone. What we call in, in theological schools, we call it sola scriptura. That is the Bible and the Bible alone. The scripture and the scripture alone. You all know that whatever is written in the Bible is not all that Jesus said. It's not all that he did. The Bible says that Jesus did many other things which cannot be written in this book. And he says even if the entire sea was to be made ink, it could not be enough. Even if the entire world could be turned into a book, it could not be enough. But it says this has been written that you may believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God. And Jesus told his disciples one time, he told them that I have too much more to tell you, but you cannot bear it for now. But when the spirit of truth comes, when the power comes, it will lead you unto all truth. Praise be to the living God. That is what we call all truth. And that is contained in the power. He told his disciples, I have been teaching you for three and a half years. But don't go to be my witnesses. Go to Jerusalem and wait for power. When power comes upon you, then you shall become my witnesses. You start from Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the whole world. You cannot become a witness of Jesus without power. Without power. Praise be to God. I said I may not be able to explain fully because of the limitation of time on the issue of scripture but one of these fine days through our channels I'll be explaining and I may not explain the prophecy there are many prophets in the world you can learn much more from them I want to explain about the gospel that the Bible says I am not ashamed of the gospel for it is God's power so you can preach by words and scripture but you can also preach by power the gospel is God's power how then is it preached the apostle Paul writing to the Corinthians in 1st Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 4 he says my message and my preaching listen to me child of God he says my message and my preaching were not with wise and persuasive words but with a demonstration of the spirit's power the gospel which is god's power is not just preached by talking is preached by demonstration of power that's why it says in first corinthians chapter 4 and verse 20 for the kingdom of god is not in mere talk but in power because the kingdom of god is found in the gospel I know many people respect the Bible as I do, but they despise the working of the power of God. It is the power of God that works out miracles. It is the power of God that works out healing. It is the power of God that comes into a person to make you love your neighbor. You cannot just love your neighbor by reading the scripture. There are many people that read scripture, but they don't have love. But the moment the spirit of God comes into your life, you have fellowship with one another. <laughs> Hallelujah. You love your neighbor. Unless the spirit comes into your life, you are going to know what the Bible says and you will do the contrary. For you to do what the Bible says, the spirit must be in you. It's called the spirit of love. You can preach the gospel by talking. That is explaining the Bible. Na jua kuna tofauti kati ya neno la Mungu na injili. Biblia ni neno la Mungu lakini injili ni nguvu ya Mungu iletayo wokofu. And the word of God explains to you what the gospel is. And if you want to preach the gospel, the gospel is not limited to words. 
it is limited to demonstration of power. Power. It's a demonstration of power. And I want to talk about this power. The disciples have been in class with Jesus for three and a half years. Yet Jesus tells them, don't move until you receive power. That shows you the importance of power in the propagation and proclamation of the gospel. For avoidance of doubt, you cannot qualify to become a witness of Jesus in the absence of power. You can become a teacher of religion, you can become a teacher, a lecturer, or any other professor, or any other Muslim that teaches comparative religion by using the scriptures, but you cannot be a carrier of power. For wherever there is power, there is a miracle. Wherever there is power, there is a miracle. That's why the Bible says, and believers shall be given power. In my name they shall cast out demons, and the signs of power shall accompany them that believe. The signs of power. Mark chapter 16 and verse 17. And the signs of power shall accompany those who believe. The signs of power. That means the gospel are signs. And they are called the signs of power. When you talk about the gospel, you are talking about power. Because the definition of the gospel is God is power. If those are signs of power, they are also signs of the gospel. The gospel has signs. It has evidence. That's why Jesus said, if you cannot believe that I am the son of God, then at least believe in the evidence of the miracles. John 14 verse 11. Believe in the evidence of the miracles. You cannot never, never talk about the gospel in the absence of miraculous signs and wonders. And that's why when people wanted to know how you can recognize a true apostle, Jesus, I mean the apostle Paul writing to the Corinthians in 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 12, he said these are the signs of a true apostle which were performed among us with great perseverance and they are signs, wonders and miracles. They are signs, wonders and miracles. The gospel is the Holy Spirit. And his power. When Jesus was anointed by God, as it is recorded in the book of Acts, chapter 10 and verse 13, the Bible says, and how verse 38, Acts chapter 10 and verse 38, the Bible says, How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and the power. It is God who anointed him with the Holy Spirit and power. And the Bible says, he went everywhere doing good and healing those who are under the power of the devil. Let me tell you, child of God, reading the scripture alone without power is dangerous. The devil came to Jesus quoting scripture by, by, by virtue that you know the scripture, that you can quote the scripture that does not give you an advantage over the enemy. The devil can quote the same scriptures. The demons can quote them even more fluent than you do. But un unless you get the power out of the scripture, you are still under the enemy. The devil told Jesus, it is written. It is not only Christians who know how to say it is written. Even demons know how to say it is written. Even the devil knows how to say it is written. But power is, is only limited to believers. The devil cannot contain the same power we carry. The, the power working in us is different. Because the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 19. That the power working in us is like the, the, the strength that God exerted in Jesus. When he raised him out of the grave. It's a power of resurrection. Even as I speak today, I prophesy to you that the power of resurrection may raise your business again. That the power of resurrection may raise your family again. This same power may open a breakthrough to your family in the name of Jesus. It's the power. That's why I said earlier, that the disciples preached the gospel. 
They did not have a Bible to make context. They did not have a Bible to draw an excuses. They never required any man's school to understand what God is saying. They listened to God. There is power when you can hear from God. There is power when you can hear from God. And the disciples preach the gospel. And if you want to know how they preach the gospel, that is documented inside your Bible in the book of Acts. The entire book of Acts is an explanation of how the gospel is preached. There is evidence in your Bible to show you how you are supposed to preach the gospel. You know, the Bible says it records that one time the apostles came and uh, they were entering the temple. Inside the temple, there are men and women that were busy reading the scriptures. But the Bible says when the disciples came by, by the, the gate, they came to a door called Beautiful and they found a crippled person. They found a crippled person. And, and they told the man, the man was there begging for something. Then uh, they, they told him, silver and gold we don't have. But in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. And the Bible says the man rose up and got into the temple. And he was jumping in the temple. And the, to know that it was, they were now preaching by power. The Pharisees and the Sadducees came. And they questioned them. In whose power and whose authority have you done this? When the power of God begins to do things. People will have unanswered questions. How did he walk? How did he get a child? But I have come to tell you, in the name of Jesus, you shall have your miracle in Jesus' name. Before the end of this week, somebody listening to me, the power of God will come upon you. It will overshadow you and lift you to another level. I don't mind what is happening at the moment. All I am thinking about is the power of God. This is the power of resurrection. We may not have what you need. And the rest of the people may not have what you need. But in the name of Jesus, you will rise up and walk. The advantage of the power of God is that it is not limited. The scripture and the Bible might be limited. For it has to be where you are for you to make reverence. The Bible has to be with me for me to make reference. Some people have been able to claim the whole of it. I have done part of that. But not everyone can have it because some people don't know how to read. But the power of God can still work through them. That's why Jesus said, if you don't want to be in error, have the power of God with you. It's the power of God. You know, you know the beauty of this is that you cannot always walk with your Bible. But you can, if you have received the power of the gospel, you can always walk with the power of the gospel. When you enter into a car where there are people of the enemy, those who are satanists, those who worship with the enemy, when you enter into a vehicle with the Bible, they may not run away. But if you are loaded with the power of the Holy Spirit, they will burn. It will consume them because the Holy Spirit is fire. That's why the Bible recommends in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 17 to not quench, verse 19, don't quench the fire of the Holy Spirit. That is the power of God. It is fire. Anywhere there are demons, it consumes them. Anywhere there are evil plans, it scatters them. And that's why I am preaching to you today that the same power may come to your home and scatter everything of the enemy. Every power of witchcraft, any power that is covering your home, right now I remove it in the name of Jesus. We don't preach just by talking. We preach by authority and power. I used to preach very much. Before I received the power of God. Never, ever since I received the power of God. You know this is why. <laughs> ever since I received the power of God. 
Many people may, may not have a clear understanding of who I was. Because they say Pastor Morabe used to be a very good preacher. But ever since he started the ministry, he became a bad man. I did not become a bad man. I started demonstrating the power of the gospel. Anything that has been done by the devil in the life of a person watching me right now. I scatter it in the name of Jesus. I preach healing and deliverance. In the name of Jesus Christ. When the apostle Paul. Who was conversant with the scripture. One time as he was going on his way to Damascus. He met with the Lord Jesus Christ. And the power of God came upon him. And that's why when you read in the book of Acts chapter 19 and verse 11. The Bible says God did extraordinary miracles through the hands of Paul. That even handicaps that died this body went out and performed miracles. When the power, the unlimited power of God comes upon you. Miracles begin to happen. Miracles begin to happen. I can even tell you today after this message. Some people watching me and listening to me will begin experiencing miracles. A miracle on Monday. A miracle on Tuesday. A miracle on Wednesday. A miracle on Thursday. A miracle on Friday. A miracle on Saturday. Your life shall become a miraculous life. People may not understand you, but God will confirm his message in your life. Praise be to God. I have come to tell you today, child of God, that the power of God that is so unlimited will work supernaturally to deliver your expectation. Praise be to God. I have seen women and men that loved the Lord, that read the scriptures, but their life was still miserable. Disease was upon them. Sickness was upon them. They could not have children. It was a very difficult life until they came to us and we say it in the mighty name of Jesus. That's how they delivered. Yesterday, as I was teaching a group of five people, I mentioned the number so that the government can be comfortable. As I was teaching a group of five people, the Lord referred to me he, he, he reminded me a miracle that had happened about about five or six years ago a woman that was working in the service of the lord came to us she had read this bible she was expecting a child sometimes when she she believed strongly that her deliverance and her, 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 her pregnancy will come from the word of god which is a very good thing to do. And then when she could sleep. Sometimes she could put the Bible. Under her tummy. Sometimes she could put the Bible on her, on her, under her pillow. And sometimes she could put the Bible under her legs. Trying to see whether God can understand and do something. The Bible is not there to perform miracles for you. But to show you the power that can perform miracles. It is a guide to our journey. The Bible says the word of God is a light at my feet. So that as you are walking, you don't miss the direction. It is the Bible that can tell you, if you want a miracle, look for where the power is. Hallelujah. If you want a miracle, miracles are not produced by the scripture. They are produced by the power of God. When the woman came to me, she had trusted the Lord and stayed in a marriage for, for 10 years, expecting a child. And she never delivered. But when she came to me, I asked her a simple question. Do you believe in Jesus? She said, yes. Do you believe in the word of God in the Bible? She said, yes, I have read at least half of the Bible. Then I said, then you require one thing. You require the intervention of the power of God. Intervention of the power of God. And when she believed, I laid my hand on her head. Because the Bible says, believers shall be given power. And they shall lay their hands on the sick and they shall get well. 
I laid, you cannot just lay a hand if you don't have power. It is power that qualifies you to lay a hand. It says, believers shall be given power. You may know the scripture like Apollo, but you can't lay the hand. Apollo knew the scripture and the way of the Lord. In Acts chapter 18, he produced many disciples, but they never received power. In Acts chapter 19, the apostle Paul met the disciples of Apollos. He laid his hand on them and the power came upon them. You cannot just stretch your hand until power is given to you. Before I received power, I never laid my hand on any sick person. And for many people that I prayed for, they died. But ever since the power of God was given to me, to every person I pray for, they receive healing. They receive the reference. What a word of God we have. And I stretched my hand to the woman that was expecting a child. I laid my hand on her. Immediately I laid my hand on her. The demons which were the demons of barrenness screamed and they said we have to go. Immediately the woman fell down under the power of God. And as she rose up, she said I feel I am light. I am free. I told her from now you are free. Go and bring a child to the house of God. As I speak, our son is about five years old. What a word of God we saw. Knowing the scripture is one thing. But carrying the power. Do not be deceived. It is power that was in Peter. That made the shadow of Peter to, conduct, to perform miracles. I want people of this land and this country, Kenya, to preach the gospel by power. Let us demonstrate the gospel. For the gospel is God's power. It is not a story. It is not a mere talk. It is a demonstration and an exercising of power and authority. Praise be to God. It is power and authority. So the Bible says, the apostle Paul performed extraordinary miracles. And when the power of God came upon Jesus, the Bible confirms that Jesus healed the sick. And as I speak to you today, I am glad to inform you that the Lord in his grace gave me his power. He gave me power to pray for the sick. He gave me power to cast out demons. There are people who think that demons go because you shout louder. Demons don't just go because you shout louder. It is the power within you that comes out with authority and the demons surrender. I, 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 am, I am happy to tell you that the Lord in his grace and mercy gave me power and authority. He gave me power and authority to cast out devils from the, the lives of people. Just like he anointed Jesus, Jesus anointed us to deliver his people, to set the captives free, to deliver those who are oppressed, people that are dreaming about dead bodies, people that have been arrested by the devil, they are doing business, they cannot prosper. We have been given power to deliver you. And the message for today is intended to turn around your life. People that are under the power of witchcraft, I have come to tell you that today God is setting you free in the name of Jesus. No matter what kind of power you are under, the gospel is coming to you today to set you free in the name of Jesus. I have come to set you free. There are students that cannot go to school because the devil has caged their resources. I have come to announce the power of the gospel to open the resources to every child going to school. Every from one, every university student, no matter where you are, in the name of Jesus, I set you free. No matter where you are, in the name of Jesus, I set you free. You could be in hospital as I speak. You are under disease and sickness.
But in the name of Jesus, I set you free in Jesus' name. Anything of the devil that is trying to press you and step on you, I have come in the name of Jesus to set you free. In Jesus' name, be free. Whatever you are. Because the gospel is God's power and through salvation. The gospel is God's power and through salvation. I know child of God. When, when the power of God comes upon you, you will learn how to do good and to set others free. You know, doing good can never come to a person except by love. That's why the scriptures say we need to receive this power of love which is above knowledge. It's above knowledge. You may have the knowledge of the scripture but if you don't have the power you may not love. Because love is above knowledge. Visions 3 verse 19 that you may have this which is above knowledge. I used to think that knowledge is ultimate because faith comes by hearing and therefore I thought knowledge is ultimate. I never knew that there is something above knowledge. Above knowledge. Love is above knowledge. And that's why when you receive the spirit, you do good. You show love to one another. When the spirit comes upon you, you are able to lay your hand on the sick and they get well. May the power of God deliver every person that has been listening to this message today. May the Lord lift you up. May he transform your family. May he change your life. May God make you to have a turnaround of your life. May you have a testimony this week. May you have the glory of God showing all over your life. This coming week is a week that has been prepared for you. This is the day that the Lord made to give you a supernatural turnaround. What a wonder of God we serve. I know God will restore you. As I leave you with those words of deliverance, I want you wherever you are to believe as I'm going to pray. I know there are people trusting God for a miracle. I know there are people trusting God for a miracle. They want to build a house, but the power of witchcraft has caused resistance on their life. You are trying to buy a car, but some witch somewhere is trying to intimidate you. But when, when this power comes to your life today, it will set you free for the glory of God. It will set you free. Today, wherever you are, God is going to set you free in the name of Jesus. God is going to set you free in the name of Jesus. Because the Bible says the gospel comes to declare prosperity. To declare freedom to the captive. I pray for you today. If you are sick, believe God. If you are sick, believe God. If you are under any power of the enemy, believe God. I don't care the name of the sickness. I don't care the name of the oppressor. All I know is that the power of God will set you free. The power of God will set you free. Wherever you are, believe God. Father, in the name of Jesus. I know your power is above all power. For you said, I give you power against all the powers of the enemy. And today, we stand in this church to bring the message of recovery of sight. To bring the message of redemption. To bring the message of deliverance to your child. Wherever they are. Those who are sick. Let them be healed. Those who are under the power of witchcraft. I speak freedom. Be free. Those who are under the influence of alcoholism. I pray. Let the influence be terminated in the name of Jesus. Those who are under the power of suicide. Some are dreaming about dead bodies. Families are scattered. People are separated. I bring the message of recovery and unity in the name of Jesus. Let their families be united. Let their lives be united. 
Let those families be received recovery. In the name of Jesus. Every accident that has already been planned, I cancel it in Jesus' name. Any form of witchcraft, magic, and incantation that has been performed against your children, I set them free now. Today is your day. Any house that is started to be constructed, lakini kakwama, I set that family free, they shall complete their project. Every project in their life shall be completed. In the name of Jesus, Father, we thank you. I am here on the altar of glory, waiting for the testimony of your children that I was sick in the hospital. When the power of God came upon me, I rose up and walked. Let money come from every source. Let there be revenue from every avenue in the name of Jesus. No matter what you are seeking for, after this prayer, you shall receive your testimony. Father, we thank you for your children and thank you for the message of glory. In Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord.